there's, there's a million places these shoes have seen and been in some of the coolest places and some of the most dangerous places in the city point blank I don't really operate in those spaces like that anymore and that's good and that's that go out to all the youngins out there man don't you know don't put yourself in predicaments when you got a question when you gonna get home like one thing for sure I always say I'm gonna make sure I get home safe But the name of this sneaker is right here is the Elephant Print Number no. Five Jordans. Yes, indeed. Is this sneaker important or make this this pair of sneaker important is that in our culture we know that the Jordans have, you know, we grew up on Jordans. Number no. Five is a classic retro Jordan. Uh, this this Jordan was re-released again in 2013 as the elephant print Jordans and if you take a look at it you know I know it look a little beat up but it got a lot of details in it and you know people go people going crazy for these um this 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 shoe is very rare shoe like only certain few people had these it's not something that you can just like get off the fly you know what I mean like you can get a Jordan number five, but you're not about to get the elephant print number fives unless you really dig, dig deep and get your research going. And nowadays, this don't probably cost you some, probably a crazy amount of money. Some crazy amount of money, for real. Um, how much a sneaker is going for on the market currently right now? That I don't have an answer for, but I'm probably sure you're looking at at least... 800 to buy probably about a band about a thousand for this shoe right now uh this shoe was like 250 when it first dropped um so you're definitely looking at probably like 800 to a thousand i'm pretty sure they they hitting heads for this though what it means to hit heads means like they hitting your head like they're going to say such a number that you're going it's like in the sneaker community, getting your head hit is like, that's like common because if you're in the sneaker trading and you're into that, it's like, you know they're going to hit your head, which means it's like, you know the sneaker, when you first got it was 250 but now the value of the sneaker is up in value because it's a vintage now. They'll turn that thing into five, what, 5,000, 3,000, 200, two, Style. It depend on the shoe. Like they gonna hit your head, cause if you really want it, you gonna spend the bread for it. I'm gonna go ahead, bust these laces off here for the first time in God knows how long. Time to get the, you know, we gonna scrub you down. Might as well get you some new laces, brother. Gonna hang you back in the closet, looking fresh and so clean, clean. Probably, I would say, last time I wore these sneakers, 20, 2016, Last time I wore these sneakers was to work a a, a, a shift <laughs> at the bar and realized these is not the shoes to be running around in. <laughs> I was like, mm, no, I'm not not doing that again. These is not the ones. They look cool, but these is not the ones. All that running around y'all got me doing. Uh oh, my bad. Put the top on. It was. I was bar back. I was bar backing. <laughs> I was like, this was dumb. <laughs> My feet was hurting like that dinner that shift. I was like, yep, never again. 
Never again. That's like me turning, turning, turning the leaf. Like, yeah, we going you know, it's time to grow up, man. All that trapping and being outside, crap. You know, I got, I got an example to set for my young man. I'm getting fast money all the time. There's many other ways to get fast money, and when I found out, I'm getting money out. If when I get off of this shift at the end of the night, I was like, okay, I can. Okay, well, oh, man, what y'all just gave me three? Y'all just gave me three hundred dollars. All right, okay, well, yeah, let me go ahead and uh, stage an exit plan. <laughs> All I gotta do is pick these glasses up. I stay focused. And, and pick glasses up, make sure that the bartender's got glass. Oh, yeah, that's not, okay. I could do that. I could do that. Yeah, and I, you know what I, you know what I seen outside? Yeah, yeah, I could do that. You say you paying me how much? Oh, yeah, let's get it done. And I get a check? Oh, God. Okay, cool. Boom, boom. <laughs> Yeah, for for real. <laughs> I'm I'm still I'm still transitioning into a, a new lifestyle, y'all. Don't get me mad. What, what you talk about? We still, we still rolling. Great. So, want to touch on that these are kind of one of the last Mohegans of my retro sneakers. Um, so, as these shoes came out in 20, 2013, I believe I got these by like 20, 2013, 2014, around that same time frame. Um, I was also very much so outside, getting my hustle on, trapping like a damn fool. <laughs> For those that don't know, follow that song on iTunes under Riz the Great, R-I-Z-T-H-A Great. It's called Trapping Like a Damn Fool, and I was definitely outside trapping like a damn fool. I had my apartment in Suitland with my family and most of the stuff I was into was in D.C., so I was never really home at my apartment in Suitland. I was always uptown because that's where I was from and that's where I knew. But I knew that going to Suitland was a little safer option because ain't nobody know what the hell I was on. Nobody knew what I was doing and nobody knew where I was coming from, and that was cool enough for me. So I would do my due diligence in the city, and I would have these Jones on. Hence why they look like the Wicked Witch of the Northwest curled up at the front like a house hit them. Because I was brick houses. Don't trip. Anyway, um, well, I say all that to say as I was getting my shit together, I also had a lot of retro sneakers. I had a lot of number sevens. I had the Jordan uh, sixes. I had the threes. I had the fours. You know, um, part of my journey into learning myself and the type of, you know, um, I don't want to use the word hustle, but entrepreneurial skills that I had. I also had access to getting shoes and I used to bring shoes back to the city. And if y'all know about the Florida Avenue flea market, I would post up over there, sell shoes and all that, too, on top of doing a bunch of other things. So. These shoes have a lot of holding memories to these times, and uh, I didn't put these in my storage. So when I was moving from Suitland back into the city, I had my stuff in storage. Um, Needless to say, a lot of things fell through for me, which you know you can call that karma, or you can call that just life lessons in general. And I ended up losing a lot of my retros, a lot of my retros, and. Uh, these are the ones that are still here with me. These are the ones that can still tell that story. And these are the ones that can still tell you what I've been through and what I've been through. 
you know. Um, most people like to keep their retros in the box and keep them super clean and this, that, and the third, which I was doing that for a while too, but when it's time to get busy outside, <laughs> Them things hitting feet to pavement, you know what I'm saying? And that's, and that's what happened with these. They they was my last of my Mohegans. They held me down. And we was running around the town. Uptown, that is. Yeah. Yes, indeed. But Jordan number fives. Ooh, ooh, shaking a little too hard. Jordan number fives. Elephant print. Y'all got to look these jumps up. I'm telling you, the value of these probably super crazy. Super crazy, like... Which I ain't gonna look it up because I'm gonna be upset. I ain't gonna hold y'all. If I look it up right now and I'll be like, you know what? I should have kept these in a box. Or da, da, da. I don't even wanna do that to myself. You know what I'm saying? I don't wanna do it. But y'all can look it up. Y'all figure it out. If y'all wanna leave a comment in the video below, if you wanna buy that new album called Famous Nobody by Riz the Great, which is coming out at the end of this month. You might be able to leave a comment on there, but just don't tell me to my face about it. I ain't going there. I'm gonna just be like, yeah, who was that person now? <laughs> what is he? What, is he what, what do you mean? It's twelve thousand dollars now? No, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. What it means to bring money home, coming out the game, is putting food on the table, um, providing for my family. You know, uh, I have a strenuous amount of people that depend on me and my family, um, including my son, but uh, also my grandmother, my sisters, my uncles, like people depend on me. They put they put they put that on me and I and I wear it well. You know what I mean? Like I get down, I get what I gotta get done and I, I make sure that everybody can eat, everybody fed and to my best abilities, you know. There's a lot of things that come with that, but at the same token making sure that I could put bread on the table and provide for my family and stay determined in it all in the same sense is a very strong goal of mine. It also uh, keeps me in the mind frame of showing people like you can get anything done. Like, don't let this stop you. We gonna figure out what the next steps is to get this place going. You know what I'm saying? No matter how many creases for the reasons. Mm-hmm. That's indeed, I got that out of Dr. Seuss. I think we need a little more on that thing right there. Let's try to bring this part back up, y'all. I look like the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Toes curled up, like you know when you got that good little situation going. <laughs> but we gonna, we gonna try to bring this thing back. But this thing ain't had a scrub down in a while, man. This is like, it's, it came out the billionaire bag, billionaire boy bag for a reason. Um, this, what made these the dream pair of shoes for me is, again, I was very much into my sneakers. I was a sneakerhead, but the number five retro pair of Jordans was always my favorite Jordans. And one of, one of the reasons is this little button right here. This little button on the laces just gave the shoe another flair that you just can't, you can't get it. You couldn't get it anywhere on. So there was all a couple other shoes that had these. Six, seven, I think it was sevens. There's a couple other shoes that had these, but the fives, it was just like, that was my favorite pair of Jordans. Like, and all the waves they came out with, like the Fresh, pair, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, like, I wanted all of them jumps. I wanted every number five Jordan that came out. Now, realistically, I wasn't I wasn't about to buy every last number five Jordan. So I only had a black and red, infrared jumps, and then I had these. Now the infrared jumps is gone. This is a kind of a crazy wave to rock with because it got like a lot of baby blue topaz undertones and um I wasn't a baby blue and wearing type of person. But I love these shoes. Like, and it didn't matter if sometimes if it matched or not, them dogs was on my feet. And these was my these was my baby ooh girl look at you. I did that. I did that. Get on the back side one more time.
did these shoes take me where I needed to go? These shoes took me to point A and B and maybe C. But these shoes didn't take me to where I wanted to be. These shoes had dreams and I had dreams in these shoes. But like anything, sometimes you have to wake up and smell the coffee and realistically these shoes was kind of keeping me into a loop that I didn't realize that I needed to get out of. So these shoes have gradually been retired. Not because I still don't love them, but because I outgrew the mindset that I had when I was rocking these shoes. I have a whole nother mindset and a, and a whole nother frame of goals and checklist to complete and trying to be the number five Jordan fly guy on the block and all that other stuff is old dreams to me, you know? It's, it's more stuff to visualize, more things to live for um, and not to take away from the sneaker itself but just the mindset that I had when I was rocking these sneakers, you know what I mean? Like, it was uh, it was like survival time, you know? It was a different, it was a different time wearing these jumps. So, I would say, did these shoes get me to where I need to be? They got me to right now where I can, I can talk about what, what I went through in these, the miles of these shoes had walked, the rooms that these shoes have walked in, the doors, the thresholds I walked through with these shoes on, for real, for real. Like, I'm gonna tell you about these times. Those times were <coughs> triumphant times. Those are times of me learning myself. Those are times of me developing my, my parenthood, learning myself as well as seeking guidance. I was seeking a lot of guidance. I was putting trust in um, a lot of people at the time that didn't have my best interest at heart. Um, and these shoes in particular <clears throat> had me, you know, busting plays. If you understand the lingo, then you know what I'm talking about. But if you don't, busting plays is just connecting the dots and making things happen. And we're going to keep it like that. Um, so, these shoes have, have had me in rooms that might seem dangerous, might seem a little scary for some people. Uh, these shoes have been in and, out of, in and out of the club and maybe I wasn't clubbing. You know what I mean? Like, these shoes, if these shoes could talk, which they almost look like they about to, but they're not. Yeah, they they still good. Um, if they could talk, man, there's it's a million places these shoes have seen and been in. Some of the coolest places and some of the most dangerous places in the city. Point blank. I don't really operate in those spaces like that anymore. And that's good. And that's that go out to all the youngins out there, man. Don't you know? Don't put yourself in predicaments where you got a question when you gonna get home. Like, one thing for sure, I always say, I'm gonna make sure I get home safe. Regardless of what's going on, I'm gonna make sure I get home safe. Period. So, you don't need to put yourself in no, in no type of environments or predicaments. You know what I'm saying? It's a million ways out here. It's a million different options. Way more options than I really had at a particular time in my life. You know, as we are developing into a faster pace of life because of the internet and social media, there's a million different ways to skin a cat, per se. I don't know. Peter, don't come at me when I said that. This is elephant print drawings, bringing up a lot of animal stuff. But it was a wild life at one time. Don't trip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, the most dangerous place in D.C. And these shoes have been in, um, I was in and out of different various, uh, traps. And for those that don't know what that is either, take time to look it up. 
Yep, I was in and out of a bunch of different traps at the time, but I was also living off of First and O Street, Northeast DC. And if you know anything about First and O Street, which is North Capitol, and that is the crossing between Northwest and Northeast right there, it can get very unchy around here. It is a, it's a, it can be, it looks nice. Is but around this time, 2013, 14, 15, it was a it was a lot of development going on. So you would see a lot of the problems that we have in our city outside, like struggling really hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? Bread of the people was across the street feeding the homeless. The homeless is also sleeping on my stoop. The homeless is also kicking it with people that was in the neighborhood keeping them homeless, if you get what I'm saying, giving them what they need to fix that they looking for. And that was a lot going on in the midst of me doing things that I was doing and trying to stay under the radar because I didn't need eyes locked in on me. Like, who is this guy and why is he always outside? I don't see him. He ain't behind the glass. He ain't on no, is he doing a nine to five? What is he doing? Like, and he got a little bad situation with him. She looking real like that. I don't like that. And we're in a city where people kind of get a little envious of what you got going on because they they feel like they should have something like that going on. But at the time, the way I was moving, my mentality was was always up to par, but it was also in a wrong space of end goals. You know what I mean? My, my end goals was stack this, move this, flip this, grab this, pack this, move that, take that, get that, back, back, boom, boom, and repeat and do it again. All under the radar while I'm in a, na a dangerous neighborhood. And most of the time, people, they were speaking to me because I'm a cool guy. They were speaking to me because they also trying to put things together. You know what I'm saying? You don't never give up too much information on what you got going on. And I ain't saying I ain't never, like, want to help these people out or put them in a certain different environment situation. But when you got people that look at you in that, in that aspect, it's something called a backdoor thing. There's some people will backdoor you or they will try to get you together because they going to be like, oh, that's what he doing. I can do that. He in the way now. Let me go ahead and get him out of the way. We ain't know. So I always move him very meticulous. Good vocab. Very meticulous about my movement. So um, I learned a lot in these shoes. And then around that time, that area was very uh, mentally... It was also dangerous, but it was mentally dangerous because you get you every day walk outside and see what you're not trying to be on. I'm not trying to be the person laid out on the stoop, but very much so could be, could be the same outcome. You don't you don't know the chapters you turn. You know what I'm saying? Why you turning them pages? The shit can change at any moment, and um, it was very eye opening. It was very eye opening. It's a very notorious block. If y'all ever look up First and O Street. It's part of DC history, and you can see if you if you dig deep enough into the history, you can understand why that neighborhood and that area is the way that that area is. And no matter how many houses, how many condos, and and all the gentrification in the world, it still ain't changed that area, and that stuff still go on right now. It's still a little rough over that jump. How tempting is it to get high on your own supply? I grew up in the in the in the in the realm of um, Biggie Smalls, Ten Cracker Mammoths. You know what I'm saying? That's no, that's one of the rules. You don't get high on your own supply. But uh, I smoked the gas, so I was a big gas smoker. I've been and and these shoes moved a lot of gas around sometimes when gas was considered um how how would you put this uh illegal that's what they would say it was illegal and let me not that would get me into a whole nother topic because the way things looking nowadays is looking like y'all was just throwing charges on anybody and everywhere y'all know y'all was trying to get that money <laughs> like where they were all y'all all that gas y'all confiscated then got put back out in the street now how about them apples yeah Getting high on your own supply right there. Bam. I was smoking that gas. Stay with the gas. Gas man. Gas man. Bird man. Put the niggas in the trash can. Put them outside of your door. I'm the trash man. 
I said he lighting up that gas there. Riding in his Jag, you gonna need that gas mask, man. Great little way, right? Yes, it is, man. This is hip hop. Like this shoe's hip hop. That that that. This time, I'm telling you, is a growth in, in my story of my journey in hip hop as well. These shoes have actually traveled to New York and been around artists and all that. Like this shoes has done some hit some stages. The shoes have done a lot. These shoes have hit Echo Stage with uh, a group I used to be in called Swag Gods. And we performed and opened up for Pusha T. And this is 2013, 2014, around this time. This is very ambitious, ambitious Riz. Fresh bricks. <laughs> yeah! King Push. Yeah. Right you know what I mean? Um... These are all around these times and very ambitious. If you want to dig in the catalog of understanding Riz the Great and like how I came to be Riz the Great because everybody know me as Rizzo. Um, I suggest you go back and listen to Swag Guys mixtapes. It's uh, S-W-A-G-G-O-D-Z, Swag Guys. And you can hear when I started being and going by Riz the Great, which is very controversial because everybody's like, everybody called you Riz already. I'm like, listen, I'm working on something new, man. I got to grow. Y'all got to let me grow. Everybody outside call me that. This is, I'm bringing the outside. I'm not trying to bring the outside into this art. I'm trying to get people to, you know what I'm saying, take this as a relief. Like, we ain't trying to dwell on all that trauma, trauma going on. Go ahead, wipe these baby down. I use the the wipe down. Yeah. When I say hip hop saved my life, yes, hip hop has saved my life. Hip hop still saves my life. Um, hip hop has grown into uh, a deep space right now. I feel that like hip hop has. Uh, yes, my bad. I feel that like hip hop has a. A tough time right now There's a lot of challenging music going outside Right now There's a lot of music that is Kind of Force force feeding A negative narrative uh, a, a deep Indication to the youth on Violence um, And not to say that I didn't grow up on some of that music myself But I feel like most of the music coming out Is that now but hip hop has definitely saved my life. If I never understood and honed in on the skill of uh, rap and, and, and being my artistry, putting words together, writing songs with people, coming up with concepts and stuff like that, I think I would have a lot of idle time and I'm probably still be outside in these shoes right now. It got quiet because that was real. Real, real spill. Nowadays, I'm not looking to run around with Jordans and my retro Jordans. You know, I'm a, you know, what I'm saying I'm a dad. I'm a grown man, and I got goals to achieve, and I got goals that I have achieved. Write them jumps down. I've knocked some. I knocked some checklists off the door, but I had to also get into my own mind and realize where I needed to clean up the clutter and the gutter of stuff that was in my mind that I thought was like, oh, this is the next process. So with that being said, you know, hip hop definitely saved my life. Hip hop has opened my eyes to a lot of things and hip hop has helped me grow, you know what I'm saying, from a rose out of the concrete. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> what does it mean to be from DC? Um, it means, it means to have tough skin. It means to understand your blessings. It means to move with that two bars and three stars on your sleeve, man. Eh? Cause ain't nobody representing us like we represent us for real, for real. Uh, I feel like DC is one of those places that get slept on in the aspect of, the culture here is so vivid, so vibrant, it's so like, 
it's just culture, bro. Like, it's so artsy. And a lot of people outside looking in just realize, like, this is, like, where the government is. This is where... This is where the White House is at. This is where the monuments. This is where you travel and do museums and stuff like that. And that's cool, you know. But when you from here, from here, like, man, we don't, people don't even really be rocking with none of that. They, some people, it be people from here, they ain't never been to the Smithsonian. There be people here that ain't never been to the uh, National Portrait Gallery. They... And that's right in the heart. They be right in, they can go to Chinatown, but they ain't going to the museum. You know what I'm saying? So this city has so many different cultures within itself, so much different life that is is screaming at people's faces. And I feel that a lot of it doesn't get embraced by the media more than some of the terrible things that go here and some of the politics that go on here in the city that there's a lot of people putting in a lot of footwork groundwork behind the scenes that don't get recognition because you just don't understand the culture of dc so i'm gonna tell you do your research get down get nitty gritty man go to tony's man you know what i'm saying go go to brooklyn grill like you know what i'm saying you gotta get down with the people man Benz, y'all y'all love Ben's chili bowl i know that Go to Brooklyn Grill, or you know what I'm saying? Tony's, or go to Tony's in uh, on Kennedy Street. There you go, go to that Tony's. Tony's on Kennedy Street, A Street, you know. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get better, y'all. We gotta do, we gotta, the Highlands. yeah, all the Highlands. Go to Highlands. Go to Highlands. Like, get down with the people, man. Like, for real. Go to Highlands. And shout out to Highlands because Highlands has also a dope dry cleaners. Dope dry cleaners. That only happened because they had good old breakfast. Now, I'm just telling you. You got to get hit. Now, know what you're talking about. Know what you're talking about. Um, but to be from D.C., the culture of D.C., I love it. I feel like this is a city that doesn't get, especially in the music industry, uh, the the recognition that it deserves, Go Go is the heart and 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 the breath of the city, and it's so much music that's been put out from people in New York, people in Atlanta, people all over the place that use that influence in their music. Like if you ever understand the bounce beat, get deep into knowing what the bounce beat is, get deep into knowing what beating your feet is, and like go back and look at some of your favorite music videos and just be like. Oh, that remind me of D.C. Remind you of D.C. for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it remind you of D.C. because it is D.C. And it remind you that they ain't really just like putting us in that in that bag, though. I don't know. I feel like they, I feel like outside looking in, they want people to still think that it's just the monuments and all this other stuff here. Like, y'all just getting hip to mumbo sauce for real, for real. They just stopped putting that in stores. Y'all ain't know what that was. Y'all just getting hip to all that. So, it's, 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 do your due diligence. Let's put it like that. I'm proud of being from here. I've learned a whole lot about being here. And I also learned when I go to other cities that DC got certain, certain respect that you just kind of, you just be kind of taken back, like, oh, damn, I ain't even know. <laughs> I ain't know y'all rock with us like that. I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell from where I'm sitting. But there's a lot of love, especially when I go to Philly. Philly, I love Philly. I ain't going to Philly showed me a lot of love out there. And New York. New York showed me a lot of love, too. You know, being from D.C., they be like, yeah, y'all D.C. cats is different. It's like, yeah, we different. We right there. We in between everything. We right there. We see what's going on. Mm hmm But why are we talking about DC? Make sure you get some chicken and mumbo. Get you some good old chicken mumbo. I'ma be very biased. Cause I'm an uptown baby. Go to Danny's on Upshur. That's all I'm saying. Go to Danny's on. Been going to Danny's on Upshur for a long time. Eddie Lennon's is cool too. Whatever, you know what I'm saying. But we just talking about uptown, uptown, like right around Petworth area. I'm gonna tell you go to Danny's. <laughs> oh man, how 
many uptowns are uh, how many uptowns in DC are there is such a deep question and you are vicious for that because you gonna make people mad and shit at me right now. <laughs> you about to make people real mad at me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break it down to y'all like this. Cool. Hot uptown, bam. I'm be I'ma say what I feel. I'ma say this real real live. Uh, uptown, Georgia Avenue, uptown. Yes, it is. Columbia Heights. Uptown. Yes, it is. Shaw Howard. Uptown. Chinatown. Downtown Uptown. We ain't going. We <laughs> it's downtown Uptown. I don't, you know, a lot of people just be like, Uptown Tacoma Park. Uh, it's Uptown. Up Uptown. All right, it's a little up, uptown. Like uptown, full time. Uptown, yes, indeed, uptown. And it borderline on that northeast line, but that's still, it's still uptown. KDY is right around there, uptown. Okay, we're going up there. But if you get to touching up to Silver Spring, mm hmm, not gonna say nothing else. Not uptown. Um, it's a lot of downtown, uptown crap going on. You know, I'm not going to go on all y'all, but I don't even feel like, you know, some spots in Northeast, I would still say it's kind of uptown, but Northeast don't really go like that. Northeast is like Northeast. They ain't, they don't want to, you know what I'm saying, get into them, in the, into them politics. But if you want to ask me how many uptowns there is in D.C., it's one uptown, and if you in that area, you know what it is. You uptown. Ooh. All right, bam. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Adams Morgan. Adams Morgan is uptown. Adams Morgan is uptown. Adam Morgan. Damn. Adams Morgan is uptown. Like, it, the top of it. <laughs> that top, that Colorama, Eric, that. That's uptown too. That's very much uptown. Um, I feel like, you know, even even Willie Park and all that, like, that's touching the borderline. That's uptown as well. But it's like, the further you going up, I call that up up uptown. Like that's that Wisconsin Avenue, and like, you gonna see the difference. The prices change over on that side of town. You know what I'm saying? But that's considered uptown Georgetown. They'll call that uptown. But I'm I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If I can't get there on the train, then I don't know, man. That's all I gotta say. Look, I can walk to Adams Morgan, though. <laughs> I can walk to Adams Morgan. Ain't no train over there, but I can walk there. Bow. Bow, bow, bow. Uh, what does it mean to get home safe? Um, at one point. Sorry about that. Uh, what does it mean to get home safe? At one point, getting home safe meant by any means necessary. Um, nothing's going to stop me from getting home to see my family. Nothing's going to stop me from um, making sure that I can put food on the table. There's nothing going. Nothing's going to get in my way of me getting home safe, regardless, good, bad, or anything in between. I'm not going to let you stop me from getting home safe. Um, now, getting home safe. Now getting home safe is sanctuary. You know, me making it back to my peace space. Me making it back to my comfort zone. Getting home safe. Back in the day, getting home safe was, I might be sleeping on the air mattress. I'm still getting home safe. I might be sleeping on a futon. I'm still gonna get home safe. I might be sleeping in, in a trap. Back in the interview, like I said, research. In the trap, everybody sleeping on beach chairs, lawn chairs in here. I'm going to make it home safe, though, in some of the dangerous situations. You know what I'm saying? But now, making it home safe is peace of mind, sanctuary, my space where I can I can game plan, my space to develop my mental and, like, really execute the things that I'm trying to get done. That's getting home safe now. What does it mean to be able to drop an album after everything I've been through? It means uh, therapy. Is the uh, it, it displays a section of my life. 
I said section for a reason because my last album ain't gonna sound like this album. And this album is a growth of who I am now and my next album is gonna sound probably a whole nother version of myself because I'm continuously growing and I'm continuously learning. And you know, with the hands of God upon me and the spirits that push through for me, I'm always blossom into something bigger. And this album piece, I've never made music like this before. I've never, like, I've made th this music, I'm sitting back like, wow. Like, you can really hear the development of the content. You can hear the development of what the message I'm trying to put out. There's the message what I'm trying to put out. I'm not trying to tell you to go out here and trap like a damn fool no more. I'm not telling you to go out here and, 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 and you know what I'm saying, like be on some crash out shit. I'm not telling you to go out here and rob people. I'm not telling you none of that, you know, crazy stuff that I had going on in the past. Now I'm trying to tell you how to get yourself together. Like I'm talking about, you know, rhyme scheme, really hip hop, breaking this stuff down. Like we ain't ain't all turn up, turn up, but they got it's some moments on this album that you're gonna be like, that was some deep act. That was deep. That was real, you know what I mean? One of the songs on the album is called The Wolf, and I just won a whammy for that in 2023, best hip-hop song in DMV, you know what I'm saying? And that song has such a deep message. It was it was one of those songs that when it was done, I was just like, wow. Whoa. Like, and I think what happened for me in 2020 when the protesters was going on and I was down there at the protest and down at the protest, down at the protest, down at the protest. My cousin was like, man, if you don't come to the studio and get that stuff off your chest. And I feel like that was a major thrush hole break in my artistry. Like all that honesty just came right out on the track called Read Between the Lines. And I dropped it in 2020 during that, that time. And Something, something snapped there where that was a freestyle, but that snapped so to the point everybody had chills in the studio. And I think from that day for, for, further, I have been in a, a mindset of intentionally providing a, a, a message or putting out content that will have people sitting back like real you vibing out to the track of course but it's like you hearing what i'm saying and you can feel the passion in that jump like straight like that real talk famous nobody i'm riz the great don't trip this is the day in my shoes usually we wouldn't say the name but you dropped your name seven times so it's all right cool let's say your name <laughs> so you know who it is and it's the day in your shoes. <laughs>